all born, even twins, we come out one at a time. But if we're going to achieve anything in this world, we're, going, we're only going to achieve something with the aid of people. And so, um, I want to talk to you very briefly about managing relationships. You can, another way to look at what I'm talking about is how to identify a good partner. Or you can even, you can even see it as well, how to be a good partner. Okay? So however you choose to look at it, I just want to talk to you about the cardinal things that a good partner should have. Okay? So if you're looking for a good partner, and it could be a good partner as in you're looking for a husband or a wife, or you're looking for someone to go into business with, have, make no mistake, going into business is, a, is exactly like getting into a marriage. Okay? If you, if you go into business with the wrong person, you'll be unhappy. doesn't mean the person is a bad person, it just means that person is not good for you. Um, you see the chart I put up, it talks about relationships. You know, when you meet someone, you're really excited. It's called the romance stage. And then, as you go on, whatever it is you're in, whether it's business or some enterprise, reality hits you. The person says something or does something, it's called a reality check. And then you're like, ah, how can this person do this? That's, you react. You might abuse each other, you know. Get out! What kind of rubbish? I must have made a mistake going into partnership with this person. And then there's some resistance. The person will call you, don't answer your phone, you don't feel like going to the office, blah, blah, blah. And then after a while, you start thinking, well, maybe it's not so bad. Maybe I could have, that's reflection. And then you might say, well, we're stuck in this thing, so we might as well make it work. <laughs> that's renewal. And the cycle will start all over again. For those of us who are married, we go through this cycle almost every day. You know? No matter how long you've been married for, you can still wake up and still that end of this <laughs> But anyway, so I want to talk about, I want to talk about uh, managing relationships, what to look for in a good partner, or how to be a good partner, right, in a relationship. The first thing is taking responsibility. Have you noticed that in Nigeria, we don't take responsibility? It's the traffic, it's the light, huh? it's the amorama, it's the one chance. It's never my fault. Okay? A good partner must learn to take responsibility. For instance, I set out to get here for a particular time. If I get here late, right, and there's traffic, even if it's unusual traffic, at least I should say, I'm sorry I'm late. I thought I set out early, but clearly not. I was caught in traffic, I should have gotten out earlier. We are taking responsibility. It shows respect for the other person. Okay, so a good partner must learn to take responsibility. And if if you're if you're looking at a marriage, for instance, a good husband, a good wife must learn to take responsibility. No matter what it is, there's a part that you have to play in it. Take responsibility for it. And then motivation. Then, you know, you, you, you watch these uh, talk shows and you see a man and a woman and they say, why do you want to get married? And the man says, she makes me want to be a better man. And all the ladies in the audience go, oh, so romantic. But the guy is just telling you that there's something wrong with him. You should never need external motivation to do the right thing. You should do the right thing because it's the right thing to do. Because the day is unhappy with you, or she's unhappy with you, then she will not do the right thing. She will act badly. Okay? So a good partner will do the right thing. Right? Even when you are not there. So the motivation to do the right thing is something you look for in a relationship. Even when you are going, a lot of people are unhappy in the jobs in, in the jobs that they are they're currently employed to do because they have a boss who does not take responsibility. When things go well, yes, you know, that's yes, my guys, they take, uh, they take instruction. When things feel useless to go, I don't know where I got them from. So we must learn to take responsibility and then our motivation to do the right thing must always come from within.
within us. You must never need external motivation to do what you know is right. You do what, to, what you do the right thing because it's the right thing to do. In Nigeria, one of the biggest problems we have is that people do not stick to agreements. You agree with somebody something, and then you go out and you realize I could have gotten a better deal. And then you just renege on your pledge or your promise. Or did I sign anything? Is the ring on my finger yet? Do you understand? If you look at the history of Nigeria, Nigeria is the, the, the battlefield is littered with agreements that have been broken. And this is true whether it's in corporate, uh, the corporate environment, even with small enterprises, or even in political dispensation, you have people crossing the carpet and doing all kinds of things. A good partner will respect the agreement even when it costs him. You know, for those of you who read the Bible, I think it's Psalm 15, it says that when you give your pledge, you hold on to it even if it is to your own hurt. Okay? You want a good partner who, who is committed the terms of the agreement that he or she has entered into. Work ethic. There's a particular proverb in the Bible that talks about the sluggard. A good partner is not a lazy person. Most people who want to be on their own, it's because they are lazy. They cannot commit to the discipline, right, of getting to work on time, of working hard. God has a way of honoring people who commit all their efforts into what they're doing. Okay? Yes, God helps the helpless, but he's not the lazy. Okay? If you have a partner that's lazy, you'll be... See, it's, it's, it's bad enough that you have to carry yourself, but you're going to have to carry your partner as well. It's different if your, cap, your partner is incapacitated, but carry him for a part of the journey. But if your partner is lazy for the rest of your life, you'll be carrying, or for the rest of the enterprise, you'll be carrying that partner. So you're looking for a partner that is not lazy. For a lot of people, it's bosses. They have bosses that are lazy. So they, they, there's a difference between delegating effectively, right? And um, 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 when you, when you just. Um, give up your responsibility. There's a difference between when you delegate effectively and when you just sit back and let everybody do the work. You don't even come in, you don't supervise, you don't help, you don't do anything. Okay? Another quality you want to look for in a partner or in a relationship or that you want to be or want to have is vision. The Bible says that without vision, the people perish. A vision is what makes you get up in the morning. A vision is what keeps you going when you're tired. Just a, a vision drives you. It, it can bring people to help you. You tell people your vision and they will join you. A vision will open doors for you. When you're, when you're looking at entering into a relationship, it's good to understand what the vision of that person is. You know, I, I, I know someone, uh, I know a, a couple who got divorced. Because the woman said she never married a pastor. The guy decided he wanted to be a pastor somewhere down the line. And his wife said he didn't commit to marry a pastor. Maybe if he's, he had told her his vision that one day I want to go into full-time ministry. As far as she was concerned, he was lazy. And she's going to get a good job, job. But a vision helps you to know that you are walking together on the road. There's a people that are in the same bus as you. Not because they're going in the same direction, because they don't have anywhere else to go. Okay? When your partner or your potential partner reveals his or her vision to you, you know if you can commit to that partnership. Attitude to authority. There's some people that are in law unto themselves. <laughs> Nobody can talk to them. If you meet such a person, run. Because life is such that there are ups and downs. A person who has a bad attitude towards authority, when things are low, when he's under pressure, he's going to do things and nobody's going to call him to order. And for ladies, if 
you ever, if you are marrying a man who nobody can talk to him, his father can't talk to him, his brothers can't talk to him, the elders can't talk to him, he is run. Or else you will be frustrated for a long time. The good way to know a good guy or a good woman is to meet their friends. See, for ladies, if you if a guy is checking you, he's on his best behavior. But you see, his friends don't have the same incentive. So if you go out with a guy and you don't like any of his friends, they run away from you because it's just like that. Front hang together. And so do princes. In the same way, it also applies the other way around. If you're a guy and you're going out with a girl and you meet her friends and they, 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 they exhibit gutter behavior, run. She's a gutter girl. She's just a good. See, the friends don't have to, they don't have to pretend for you. So a good way to know a person is by the crowd they hang out with. Even the Bible says that show me your friends. It says, no, sorry, it says good, good, uh, it says uh, bad company corrupts good manners. That's what it says. But the people you hang out with show a good picture of the kind of person that you are. So when you're looking to get into a relationship, look for the person's friends. Even if you're going to work with, uh, with someone and he has some very strange friends, she has some very strange friends, stay away from that. It's a good indicator. You don't have to have, like Daniel, a uh, finger on the wall to know that you shouldn't go some, to some things. Attitude to learning. You know, there are some people that no matter what you say, they have a quick retort. Some people cannot learn. They're either too proud or they're just too comfortable in their own little environment. There's a reason why they don't agree with anything. Okay? When you stop learning, you start dying. To live is to learn. We should be learning every day. If you meet a person, if you're thinking about going into business with a person who doesn't have a good attitude to learning, that person is going to hold you back. It's going to be a problem for you. What, how, do, how do you see the world? Do you see the world as half full or half empty? There's some people, they always see the bad side of anything. They're very cynical. Then there's some people that are unrealistic. Okay? But I believe that we must approach life with an abundance mentality. I'm a Christian, and the Bible says that God does not frustrate or disappoint the expectation of the righteous. Okay? In spite of my reality, I have, I have faith that God can turn things around. It's not that I'm being unrealistic or unwilling to accept the reality of my situation, but I would rather think good about a person I would rather think good about an opportunity than think bad. There's some people that they have bad mouth. You can't afford to tell them your dreams because they will tell you, they will give you a reason why you should not do it. Stay away from people like that. And if you're that kind of person, stop it. This is a quote by Sir Winston Churchill. He said, You can measure a man's character by the choices he makes under pressure. As you walk with people and things happen, see how they react. If you see some people under pressure, invectives. There's a lady that I know who's an usher in, in, in a church, not COD, don't worry. And uh, one day we were cycling in our estate. And as we were cycling, she's very competitive. And next thing, she fell down. She slipped and fell down. And I've never heard so many swear words. I was looking at that. Is it more than falling? If you, it's the hazard of running or exercising, you will fall down. There was no big deal. But she completely lost all decorum and used words that should not be used anywhere near good people. So when you see people, the way they act under pressure, it tells you very easily you can be taking that beating from them. A good partner exhibits a good set of priorities. You don't have to have a label on his uh, 
chest that says, my God, my family, my work. But the way you see your priorities is determine what you do. Okay? If you leave work and you head to the club, it shows that the club, your friends, have a higher priority than, say, your family. So when you watch a person and you see the decisions that the person makes, the actions that they take, it shows the kind of priority. Do you understand? When a person is in an argument and says, no, leave God aside, this is business, you know immediately that that person, God is not at the top of his pecking order. Okay? So look out for that. And if, if you find yourself in a situation where your priorities aren't well ordered, you should ask yourself, how are things supposed to work? You cannot continue to live your life in such a way that anything goes and expect that somehow you're going to make it big. It doesn't happen. Uh, the picture you see is a, a guy who recognizes him, Edward Snowden. Thank you. He's going to release everybody's secrets. Some people are saying he's a bad person. Some people are saying no, he should be given an award. You know? Um, you know, God says that we should be everything in love. You know, so he didn't say we should go around revealing people's secrets and disgracing people. But when you're looking at a partner and when you ask about, what do you think about uh, Viola? That Viola is a bad girl. What about this, this useless girl? You know, there's some people that just don't have anything good to say about anybody. Beware of people like that. Okay? So these are just these are just uh, pointers, so 12 pointers that I've uh, highlighted that we should look out for. I think they're practical. They're not, it's not anything that's beyond us. It doesn't require, uh, you, don't, you don't need to go and buy anything from Alaba to measure. But it's also pointers for us to be better partners in the relationships that we get into. Thank you very much.